Good day to you all. Welcome to my channel. My name is Donato and today we have a very special guest, none other than a current world record holder. But before we speak to this amazing guest, if you are new to this channel, please do click on that subscribe button and leave a big thumbs up because what you're about to hear may blow your mind. It certainly blew my mind when I saw this lady's uh, Instagram and site. Welcome to the show, Carla Molinaro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shall I say buongiorno? Come stay. <laughs> Obviously, we, we're both of Italian heritage, but uh, I think for you on your dad's side, for me, my mom and my dad. But welcome to the show, Carla. Absolutely amazing to have you on the show. I love that smile. How are you Thank feeling today? Oh, I'm good. Thanks. It's You're nice good. <laughs> If, if I was to say, so I'll do a, a bit of an intro to yourself because a lot of people watching uh, this show may not know uh, who you are and what you've achieved. But I just wanted to say you're the current world record holder of the Land's End to John O'Groats distance, which is a long, long way. You can go into the detail how far it is. It's like uh, over a thousand uh, kilometers. But you've done that in 12 days, 30 minutes and 40 seconds, which is extraordinary and as i mentioned uh, b before we come on to the show i was when i was doing london marathon i had people passing me who were world record holders but they were dressed as trees superheroes and all sorts but for yourself yours is a, a pure running endeavor what was the distance land end to john o'groats i think it ended up being 1374 1, <laughs> wow and it was in 12 12 days and yeah. that 30 minutes i mean what for, for, for those, what, what possessed you to do this? Because you've done that only in July of this year mm. with everything that's going on. What what made you go go for that? So this, like everyone that took on lockdown projects, mainly more sensible ones of learning how to bake bread, I decided to take on the lockdown project of running up the length of Great Britain. So, yeah, it was kind of it was spurred from that where all my races were cancelled and I was like, this is like an awesome opportunity to go and do something cool. So, yeah, yeah. yeah that was the reason. <laughs> so you'd had been doing other amazing races because when I look at sites, it's all about adventure, long mm. distances. But again, there may be some people out there who like to do these endurance challenges. And like yourself, you that was your lockdown project. For me, I think I, I got on my bike, so to speak, and done a lot of cycling long distances. It's funny how we do that. But you're, you're not a beginner to this, are you? you? You've been doing this, what, five years, six years, ultra running? Yeah, I've... Yeah, it's not something new. I didn't just start the country in lockdown. I, I, I have seen some people where they decide to do like 100 marathons in 100 days and then after three yeah. days they wonder what's happened. But yeah. you've been doing this while and, and obviously you've come not just from a running background. You used to be a triathlete and yeah. a champion triathlete as well at that. Yeah, so I did. I've always done sport and I kind of ended up when I went to university, I took up triathlon and I did that for 10 years getting to like the Ironman level uh -huh. and then one day I went and did Glasgow half marathon and I loved how I didn't have to worry about where my helmet was where my sunglasses were <laughs> if I had my wetsuit on all I needed was my running shoes and four safety pins to put on my yeah. number on and I just loved how simple it was and yeah. I found for me I got a little bit obsessed with triathlon. Like if a yeah. friend had said to me, do you want to come away for the weekend? I was like, can I bring my bike? Is there a pool? How am I going to train? Where <laughs> I'm still a bit like that with running. But yeah. You can just chuck your shoes in your bag. And if you're going anywhere, you can nip out for a half an hour run and yeah, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what got me more into running. And then I guess, the adventure running is something that I really enjoy where I can just, you know, that's kind of like my holiday, like put a backpack on and see how far I can run because yeah. it deliberately slows you down. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I like that part of it. That sounds in incredible where you say it's for me, I've sort of gone a bit the other way where I've done mm. my first triathlon this August. But I can totally empathise what you're saying in terms of the obsession. So I do see lots of people, where's my bike? Where's my wetsuit? Yeah. And um, But that's the beauty of running is, is the simplicity where you literally just put shoes on and, and go. Yeah, and, and you, don't, you don't, all 
all you need is a pair of shoes. I mean, clothes are helpful if you don't want to get arrested, but <laughs> shoes, like, and then you can just, and you can do it anywhere. You can run in the mud or on the road or on a track, or it might be boring and you're somewhere where there's only a 400 meter loop, but you can do it. You can run yeah. around it all day. <laughs> you haven't been running in your birthday suit now, have you? <laughs> you said as long as you got clothes on i thought well you know um obviously cer certain parts where with with our families over in italy or wherever there are places where there is maybe nobody for hundreds would more but uh, i think with this but if people wanted to find you before we go into more detail if people wanted to find you on the social media and on the interwebs what's the best way of finding you so super easy, just Carla Molinaro, and it's that at Instagram and Facebook, and my website is carlamolinaro.com. So. I'll put the links down below for all of those, and they can find you. I have to say, your website is magnificent. It looks um, absolutely proper professional, because it's not just running that you do. You do other things as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously, see, seeing your amazing smile, and you are sponsored. Whilst the sunshine is glaring on your shirt, you are sponsored by <laughs> H H Hoka which do amazing shoes. I do love my Hoka shoes. And I mentioned earlier, I've done the Hoka rap, which I won't bore everyone singing with. They can follow them. But uh, <laughs> it was one of my embarrassments where I had, I think, three different types of Hoka shoes and I was doing some are fast and some are slow. But do you have a favorite shoe of Hoka that you run in? So like every day is like a Clifton 7. That's like just okay. super comfy, yeah. like yeah. nice, easy runs. And then my favourite one at the moment, actually, is the Torrent, which is one of their trail shoes, okay. um, which I only got a couple of weeks ago, but it really lets you feel the ground. And mm. I, it's a bit different to their normal shoes where there's quite a lot of sponginess in them, yeah, but yeah. I quite like how light and fast they are on the trail. So I'm enjoying those that one. Can you repeat the name again? I've, yeah. got, to, I've got to look this up. Have yeah. you got one there? Oh, oh, I like that. So it's called the Torrent. Torrent, um, as in T-R-O-O-E-N-T. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I've got to look yeah. that one up because I mean, obviously with winter coming and I do most of my training runs on trails or in Birmingham. Mm. Um, as those who don't know is uh, Birmingham has more canals than Venice. <laughs> obviously, they're not as good looking. You know, no offence to <laughs> Birmingham. Don't shoot me now, brummies. Um, obviously, it's not as beautiful as Venice, but there's lots of trails. I love my canal running. And those shoes look perfect because mm. I'm in the market now to get some winter shoes. So Torrent, I will be looking up those. Yeah, they're nice. But, uh, and I've tried the Cliftons. I think back in the day for me, I think it was the Clifton 5. Yeah. And they're great. As you say, great for mileage, lots yeah. of running. But for you, the distances that you do, and I've got to be honest, Carla, sometimes trying to get my mind, whilst people sort of look at me, and I mentioned that, you know, I was out for coffee this morning with a cousin of mine. He's doing the 2.4 challenge, which is 2.4 kilometers. And he can't get his head around how I manage just a casual training run of 10K or 20K without breaking into sweat. But your training runs are like 50K. How, how do you explain that to people? How you get around that is, do you have to keep constantly running those distances to keep that level of fitness? Do you have lots of easy runs? Do you do speed sessions? By the way, I did spot that amazing 5K run. You know, was it with the Clapham Chasers, the relay yeah. team? Mm. And because sometimes people tend to think that endurance runners like yourself who do thousands of kilometers, that you sort of, you know, you've got some speed, but you were running 18 minutes, sub 90 mm. minutes, which is, you know, super fast. You know, how, how do you manage that wide range of speeds and endurance? What's your yeah. typical training schedule for a week? Yeah, so for me, um, I was really happy with that run, especially because I've only, after the jog, I've only been running again for five weeks. So yeah, yeah. to get some speed back in my legs, I was super happy. But I, I've i always had either two, well, I've got two interval sessions a week in my program okay. and one um, like tempo run where I'll do yeah. like longer intervals. And I've always kept those really fast sessions in and I did, definitely kept them in in my le jog training so i've yeah. got that range and speed so i okay. can run really slow fast and i can run all day long so wow. you have to kind of keep both in there so your body has got this bigger range and then wow. i have a couple of easy runs um and then a long run and that long run is where i i build up the distance to the, right, the 50 right. 60 k training runs but okay. 
yeah, you definitely do have to build up to doing them. And I don't definitely don't do them all year round. It's, you know, this like little looks like a wave. Yeah, so yeah, going up and down yeah. because yeah. it's not sustainable to go and run 50k every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and you do, yeah, once you've come off it you then do need the time to build it back up again so yeah I've, so you mentioned the intervals and tempos those are sort of two key types of trainings which for 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 me and a lot of endurance runners we, we understand the long runs and the slow runs to build the endurance but the tempos and the intervals could you explain because yeah we in a world where people when they say a tempo some people go flat out yeah uh, which is you know we we <laughs> without teaching us to suck eggs we know that's not a tempo and an yeah. interval I mean, can you explain what, what you mean by interval yeah. session first so an interval session so today for example i'm doing one where i'm doing 12 lots of 300 meters so i run 300 meters as fast as i can i have 40 seconds rest and then i do another one and I keep doing that 12 times through. And yeah. those runs, you run as fast as you can. Like if Flat someone out. was like trying to run next to me, yeah, yeah, and have a chat, I couldn't talk. That's okay. how you want to feel on those like. So it's like you're being short... chased by an animal. Yeah. So yeah. You, you've got to you run are running, your life. <laughs> at the end, you're like bent in half, trying yeah. to suck air okay. in. Um, where a tempo is almost at that pace, like you want to do a marathon at, for example. Mm -hmm. And so it's in between really fast and your slow jog. It's quite a sustained yeah. effort. Yeah. And if someone was going to have a chat with you, you could probably give them like one or two word answers. You yeah. couldn't have a conversation. That's mm -hmm. kind of how it feels. And those runs are really great for getting you ready to run at race pace. Because right. there's a lot of people, for example, that will be like, I want to do a four hour marathon. But they'll go out on their long runs and they'll be running at five hour marathon pace, which is great. And it's kind mm -hmm. of where you want to be for most of your runs. Yeah. yeah. But if you never go and practice at the four hour pace or faster, you're never going to get there. But by yeah. adding those practice runs in and letting your body get used to it, mm -hmm. it's then able when you put it into that race situation yeah. to be like, ah, OK, <laughs> Right. I know what so, doing. <laughs> got you. Got you. So that's what you call a tempo pace. So it's definitely not 5K, 10K pace. It's more of a sustained fast, but not uh, definitely not flat out. It kind of depends what I'm training for. So if it's it's on the so at the moment, I'm actually training for a 100K race. So all my tempo runs, I know, I'm really far, um, all my tempo runs are done at the pace that I want to do that race in because it's my yeah. main focus. But after yeah. that race, I might move to focusing on a marathon. So then my tempo is quicker because okay. marathon I can do a bit quicker. So yeah. it kind of depends what my goal is as to yeah. So you um, dial in the pace based yeah. on what you're training for. That makes absolute sense, Carly. Yeah. So you mentioned you've got the 100K coming up. When, what date have you got that placed in? So you've started training now so mm. people can get an idea of time mm. scales of training. So that's the when end of that? January. End of January. So that's, what, 12 weeks away? Mm. Yeah, 12 weeks? yeah, so ideally that's not probably quite long enough to train yeah. for a 100k race it's like that's probably well 16 weeks for a marathon is a really good starting point yeah, um, yeah. but it's what it is so i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you said <laughs> it's funny Carla. the uh, the regular viewers to this channel will note back in february i posted a link to an article by a very famous brand. By the way, it wasn't Hoka. It was uh, it was a drinking type of brand where they talked about training for a marathon, your first marathon in 10 weeks. Mm. And uh, I thought that was a bit hopeful um, yeah. because having run a few now, I remember my first one, as you probably remember your first ever um, yeah. marathon race is how I got to the end with 16 weeks training how anyone can get to the end with 10 weeks I don't know but um, so you're looking at that time scale and when you mention the tempos and the sessions speed sessions intervals how close because you you mentioned the cycle which mm -hmm. for, for those listening watching it's very important following the cycle rather than being at the top all the time or at the bottom yeah. is do you bring those sessions in closer and do you then do you then taper it down or is it uh, a regular amount throughout uh, each week? 
so for the race. So yeah, luckily I was involved with um, a research project into tapering and learned quite a bit from it. And what we found from that is that with tapering, you want to keep the intensity high, but you want to half your volume. So as you yeah. come into it, I literally cut what I'm doing in half, but yeah. I keep those fast runs there. So your legs are still ticking over and mm -hmm. I'll do those up until like three or four days before a race. Okay. Uh, with my strength and conditioning, so I do strength and conditioning every week, I stop that two weeks out. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. something I definitely stop. The faster runs I keep in um, mm. and I half the volume. Yeah, yeah. That sounds absolutely brilliant. But I wanted to go back to the Le jog. You did do, mm. was it from Land's End to John O'Groats or was it mm. John O'Groats to Land's End? It was from England. Now, is that, for those wondering, is that uphill or is it downhill? Because <laughs> <laughs> if I'm looking... She's like, you're going uphill. Um, so basically, <laughs> on the map, to me, it looks uphill. So, so you think, oh, I'm starting in Cornwall. That's going to be yeah. pl pretty flat. Yeah. No, no, no. Cornwall was the hilliest part of the whole thing. Yes. It was ridiculous and it was relentless. You were either up, going uh, up or down. Yeah. Oh, all day. Um, so you got your hill repeated out of the way at the beginning. And it was like, okay. you could see the hill, like three kilometres in front of you. And it's like, yeah. really? <laughs> so the reason I chose that way is that the wind in the UK generally goes southwest to north. Okay. Um, and when I, I spoke to a few people who had done it before, and this one guy, Dan Lawson, who tried it in 2018 and ended up doing it again this year, said to me, he did north to south and the wind was horrific. So he's like, yeah, change yeah. your route and go the other way. And I was like, all right, if someone right. that's done this before is telling me to change my route, I'm changing my route. <laughs> <laughs> so you did take a lot of leaves from those experiences. And, and I remember reading about your actual race and, you know, having a, a Guinness World Record. You did have other people join you on the race because I was going to ask you, because a lot of people say, what keeps you going through an endurance event? Because for this one, and I think for a lot of people, you know, with what, what's happening now, with C19 I'll call it C19 or whatever um, but uh, is that I've, I've done five events and they're called events because of the legalities it's not a race that so we've mm -hmm. got a distance but you done this challenge whilst you were the only person running you did have a support team but I loved when you said you mentioned that you had Sharon Gator and uh, Angela White during mm -hmm. one who both you know, one was the oldest record holder and the other, and Sharon was the last year's record holder. How did it feel when you had people join you on the run? Did it give you a like physical and spiritual lift or did you just feel happy to see people running with you? How did you feel with that? Yeah, like having those guys join me and there was another two guys, Adam and Andy, who had all done the job before. Yeah. Having them come out was amazing. Obviously, everyone that came out was amazing. But yeah, yeah. I had a lot of people join me and I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way, but they were like jogging with me and they're like, oh, I'm doing virtual the job. I'm doing <laughs> 300 metres a day for 17 years. And I'm like, oh, it's not the same thing. You don't understand. <laughs> But when these other guys join me and they're like, I can feel your pain. I'm like, yes, you can. Like they yeah. just knew like how you felt. So having those bits was amazing. Um, but everyone else that joined me, oh, it was so cool. You'd be like running down the road. And I always had a cyclist with me for safety yeah. and yeah. for navigation. And I'd be like, Scouse, is that someone in the bush up there? And he's like, yep. And some runner would just jump out of a bush, literally. <laughs> I'm like, where have you come from? <laughs> and they would just start running with me. It was just, I felt like the Pied Piper. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really cool. Um, the only thing was that every day I had this little patch in the afternoon where I really struggled. Like I was so tired and I just didn't want to talk to anyone. Um, I just, all I wanted to do was just to be left alone and to run. Um, so the first couple of days I quite, felt quite bad because everyone had made this effort to come and run with me and then they're running next to me they're like do your legs hurt I'm like yes <laughs> like, are you tired I'm like yes and I'm like go away like, leave me alone so after the first couple of days we're like come and run but not after 5 p.m <laughs> basically that's when I started sulking each day um 
but once I once we like realized this and put it out it was so much better because I didn't feel guilty if anyone joined me and I couldn't engage a couple of times some friends did but it's a little bit easier when it's a friend and you're like look I don't want to talk to you but please talk to the cyclist because you distract me like it's quite nice <laughs> having this background noise yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but you can't really say that to a stranger you know like no, hey no. thanks for coming I don't want to talk to you um so yeah. it was quite interesting like learning that almost psychology side yeah, of it yeah. um and being like knowing when it was awesome to have people and when you just wanted to be left alone yeah I mean that's brilliant to hear Carl I mean everyone's different you know people talk I mean I see in the background all these bibs of marathon majors some people do not want to run a marathon major because it's so crowded you, it is a different world it's like we're talking chalk and cheese the runs that you do and I've done some marathons where I'm on my own you know some local ones but then the big ones where there's tens of thousands of people and you're packed in sometimes you just want space don't yeah. you and uh, maybe it's the Italian temperament mixed in with the Anglo-Saxon temperament you think bah, bah, fine. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah it, it it does sound great do you have any favorite because it's such a long way and um, for those who are watching in the states or wherever they are in the world I, I do get a lot of Central American South Americans watching will have no idea of the British geography yeah. but obviously you've gone through it is England and Scotland whilst you may have gone close to Wales um, yeah. It wasn't such an island. Do you have any favourite parts of that particular run? And why Why would you say it's your favourites? Or is there more than one favourite yeah, area? So it's a beautiful of, part of the world. Oh, yeah. So the thing with, so running in England, um, actually running the whole way, we were on these A roads. So these busy dual carriageways where cars are coming past at 70 miles an hour. And in England, certainly, the roads we were on, there were these quite big hedgerows on either side. So you couldn't yeah. really see that much. But once we got up to Scotland and to the Highlands, um, which we were in Scotland for five of the 12 days. So Scotland is big. Wow. But once we yeah. got there, all these hedgerows disappeared. And all of a sudden, you could see these rolling hills. And, Open and space. it was just beautiful. Like, even some of the hills still had snow on top of them in wow. July. Like, it's mad. Um, <laughs> it's but, a bit like Cyprus. Here. <laughs> yeah. And that was, like, one reason I was then, like, really glad we had gone south to north because those last few days were just so beautiful. Yeah. And then there was this one part in Scotland they're called the Pentlands, so they're the it's this hill range just south of Edinburgh, right. and you go. We went up onto the top of this hill. There's a guy actually at the bottom of the hill that was like, "You can't run up there. It's too steep for a runner." I was like, "There's a running <laughs> path through there, but okay." Yeah. So we just ignored him and carried on going. And it was the first time that, and actually the only time that we were off road. There was no cars, and the ground was like this mossy sponge so yeah. when I was running on it you, I was just like bouncing into the ground and for 10 <laughs> kilometers nothing hurt and I was like it was sunset wow. and that it must was, have been bliss oh it was like just perfect like the sun yeah. was setting on the dam at the top and there was no one around and it was a beautiful day and yeah it was just that was a pretty like magical moment so that um, was the Pentlands yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but it's quite nice. Like a local ended up coming to find me because he was like, oh my God, I saw that you were going up and over the Pentlands and it was sunset and I didn't think you'd be able to get back down. So I came to find you to lead the way, but you ended up running really quickly and getting <laughs> off there. <laughs> but it's completely understandable. The ground was like so lumpy and bumpy, they thought I would freak out and take ages. But because it was so soft, I could actually run. Yeah, yeah. So, and that really does help. Which, out of interest, did you have the same shoes all the way on the route or did you change different shoes or different styles? So I had, um, I used Clifton 7s the whole way, but after my feet started to swell after two days, which we knew would happen, and then yeah. I swapped to, they've got like an extra wide shoe. Mm -hmm. So after three days, I swapped to the extra wide and I had but you're still one a Clifton. It was yeah, still a clip I had, yeah, yeah okay. one pair for the morning and one for the afternoon, and we mm -hmm. just swim around. But yeah, yes, yeah. and that helps keep the feet fresh. 
yeah I just kind of felt like you know you're compressing the foam in them so much so stopping them at lunchtime gave the shoe yeah yeah a bit of a rest I don't know if that's a thing but it felt like <laughs> it was in my head like all these little things you're like if in your head you believe that yeah to help you it's fine <laughs> it, it works absolutely the placebo don't never underestimate the placebo so your typical day you say you'd swap at lunch what time would you start your runs so every day we would wake up at 4 a.m and then we would start running at 5 a.m so wow. that would be yeah get up eat stretch massage get dressed mm. if we had stayed in a hotel we would drive back to the start um my rule was um if there was somewhere to stay within 15 minutes then we could drive that if not yeah. we would stay in the camper van um wow. and we went to the hotels just because you could just have a proper shower and get yeah. changed properly yeah. without like your leg wrapped around your head <laughs> in the back of the van so which van sounds life. fun but it's yeah. not um no. so yeah we would start at 5 a.m and then we would go through till 30k where I would st which was about three and a half hours mm -hmm. I would stop get off my feet for 10 minutes have a fried egg sandwich have a little bit of a massage then we would carry on going till lunchtime which was 60k yeah. um there I would stop for about 45 minutes mm -hmm. and then go through to 90k again where I would stop again for about 10 just to get off my feet a bit and then we would go through to either the distance I had set myself to finish that day or 10 o'clock at night, kind of whichever came right, right. And then, yeah, finish at 10 p.m., dinner, massage, sort yourself out in bed by 11. Wow. Long day. And, then, and then back <laughs> up at four and then it starts again. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember reading you saying about your legs hurting and the pain. How do you psychologically get yourself prepared for another day where you think my god yesterday was tough I've got the same again how how do you prepare yourself or do you just get into a zone I know a lot of people talk about they're in a zone and they don't think about the pain or whatever it's just yeah. you're in a zone aiming to get to the next destination how, how do you work with that Carla yeah pretty much you feel the pain but because yeah. for me there was such a definite goal in terms of not only do I want to get to John O'Groats, but I want to get there in this time. Mm. Um, I had to just keep on moving. So yeah. every single step hurt from lunchtime on day one. I was then in a world of pain until about two weeks after I finished. Um, mm. But because there was such a focused goal, it was very easy for me to just push through. And I think yeah. there's yeah. one thing like my support team were like, oh, we think you need to have a 12 hour break because you're really tired. I'm like, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> meant to be really tired. And I think like I had fully accepted starting the project that I was going to be tired and I was going to be sore and I was going to be a world of pain. But I was like, yeah. I am not letting this take 12 hours longer because I needed a little rest. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, it's 12 days of my life. It's 12 yeah. days and then it's over. So yeah it was actually quite easy for me to get that into my head and yeah. to just push the pain, just face it, be like, well, it hurts, but. <laughs> so it's a case of embrace the pain. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And, just, and go, go with the, so it sounds like your focus was on the goal and focusing on getting to the finish, which yeah. um, I tend to uh, talk a lot about, but it sounds like uh, very very challenging but you do you have done other races as well this is a build-up mm. and uh, I think you mentioned there was um, that famous one in South Africa and then there's one in Australia as well these are all preparations for your lands into John O'Groats are those you know do you want to talk us through because the co I think you've got gold medal on that mm. one and also the uh, is it the oceans race or yeah. coast race in Australia T tell us a little about a bit that about those two races yeah so I think like that's the beauty with running like when I started I was like there's no yeah. way I can do a marathon but once you've done a marathon because you just build up to these distances yeah, and then yeah. you're like oh my god I did I did do it and I didn't die 
like this is awesome so maybe <laughs> yes, you might to do I didn't die. Yeah, an ultra marathon so then you go and find a 50k race and you do that and you don't die and that's kind of how you know you slowly build it up and with the South Africa run so we were trying to do 90 kilometers a day every day going from Cape Town to Comrades and Comrades is the oldest and the biggest ultra marathon in the world yeah. and you know most ultra marathons that you do certainly in the UK you probably get 200 people at a start line yeah this one in South Africa you get 20,000 people like 20,000 for an 20, ultra <laughs> people. like that is how big this race is it is insane yeah. so we tried me and five other guys we tried to run from Cape Town to Comrades but we all got injured in different ways, shapes and forms. We mm. all got to day six and then we all had to kind of change our goals because our like I ended up tearing my quad. Um, Ooh. Yeah, which was fun. Um, but I went and saw this physio that we found in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, I need to keep <laughs> on running. So she's yeah, like, OK, yeah. do you want tape? I was like, I'll take it. She's like, do you want this electric shock machine? I was like, yep. <laughs> I just took everything. I was like, I'm just going to try. So, <laughs> What I did there is I was no longer going to be able to do 90K every day. So I swapped my goal and I was like, okay, I'm just going to see how far I can get in 20 days. And I want to make sure that I get to the start line of the race. Yeah. So I ended up doing 900 kilometers and yeah, finishing in the top 10, which I've no idea how I did. I basically just ran and didn't look at my watch, didn't know how fast I was running, didn't know what time of day it was. Um, you just went for it yeah and all these girls at the end they're like they're all in their like branded gear and I'm just in like yeah. shorts and a t-shirt like I didn't have anyone <laughs> helping me and they're like who are you I'm like sorry yeah. <laughs> but what I learned from that project was that yes we failed at our original goal but we changed what we were trying to achieve and doing that it made me realize that actually I can do stuff day in, day out. It's just having the right team around us. So with yeah, that project, yeah. for example, we didn't have a physio um, and we weren't doing anything to like help prepare our muscles for the next day. So mm -hmm. on the jog, I ended up getting a sports masseuse and a doctor come with, which changed the whole scope of yeah, the project yeah. and helped me get to the end. So you, you learn these little gems along the way, which yes you might have failed in what the original task was but yeah it helps you prepare for the next one yeah and does. yeah there's no harm in you know I think a lot of people get really upset and they're like oh my god I failed you're like yeah but what did you learn like yes. as long as you learn yeah. something it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> there is a brilliant Albert uh, I think it was either Thomas Ford or Albert Einstein mm -hmm. one of these famous quotes where you know failure is is okay it's what we learn from our failures and then moving on with that. So you're clearly doing that every time, Carl. So the other one that I wanted to ask was the Great Ocean race. Mm. Is that the Australian one? So that's the Great Ocean run. So basically what happened with that was the Comrades run that we did, we had some guys come and film us and they were both from Australia mm -hmm. and they said, so they were getting some money from the Australian film board, but to help fund the project but in order to do that they had to get someone to go and do some running in Australia and to film it yeah so another guy from the comrades run was going to do it but he dropped out and then they phoned me they're like do you want to come and do a run in Australia um and would you want to be filmed I was like yeah okay that yeah. sounds cool yeah. when are we going to do it they're like next week and <laughs> I was like all right and what are we going to do they're like I don't know make something up so I was like all right, like I had no idea about Australia. So I put a little shout out on Facebook and I was like, who knows of a multi-day run in Australia? And someone got back to me and said, oh, there's this really cool road called the Great Ocean Road, which is down in the south near Melbourne. Yeah. Goes around the tip. It's like a little yeah. V. Yeah. Um, and they're like, it's beautiful. It's on the coast. And I started to look at it and I was like, awesome. So I said to these guys, through 260k let's split it into five days and go and do that oh yeah. four days um yeah. so yeah i had a week to plan a run to figure out the route luckily it was run on the coast keep the sea on my left and just keep on going <laughs> <From one side laughs> to the other. i love that navigation 
pictures or a ride, <laughs> didn't get lost. Um, and yeah, went out there a week later and just did this and ended up getting the FKT, which is the fastest known time, um, which is kind of like the Guinness World Record books yeah. for runners. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just did it on my own, had these guys filming me and it was amazing because it was yeah. about a hundred kilometers of the route was on the Great Ocean Walk, which is a trail. Yeah. And I didn't see another person on that whole trail. I was the <laughs> only person there. And it was just the only thing that I saw was kangaroos jumping out of the bushes and scaring the shit out of me. But <laughs> apart from that, it was brilliant. <laughs> I, I mean, that sounds, and that was straight after Comrades, almost yeah. literally straight after. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I've got to say, Carla, I could talk like a lot of people. It's, I love the, the time that you've given over. We could talk forever about running an event. <laughs> so we've got to get you back on for another time because I know time time is oppressing. But I've got some just a bit of fast and fast and furious fun questions, if one word for it. But um, okay. so it's just a bit light hearted, Carla. So I've got five questions here and uh, quick fast answers it's yeah. what's the first answer that comes to mind <laughs> so having recently done that super fast 5k and you do lots of training what's harder a fast 5k or an easy 50k fast 5k okay <laughs> i know you love your cakes cupcake or cheesecake 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 do food during a run oh uh cliff bars cliff bars excellent your go-to food after a run Cake. Cake. Any particular <laughs> type of cake? Victoria uh, cake? Lemon cake? meringue pie. That's a lemon, good one. Oh, oh, I like that. And then the final question, comrades or the Great Ocean Run? Oh. It's a tough one. Uh, no, probably comrades. Yeah. Comrades. Brilliant. I've got to say, Carla, thank you ever so much for your time and uh, taking us. It's been an absolute joy and pleasure speaking to you. As I say, We've got to do this again because there's so much more and you're always doing some fabulous adventures. So everybody can find you on your Facebook, Instagram as Carla Molinaro. I'll leave the links below. And also your amazing website where there's super description because you, you also do coach and strength and conditioning as well. Is that right? Yeah, that is. And I, and I love on the Instagram post, some of those things I've seen and with my little hammy string having a bit of an issue at the moment, some of those have helped me tremendously. So I've been trying them, but they're damn hard work, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> That's why no one does them, but they're so good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. And on that note, you've been so good to everyone on here. Thank you so much for uh, your time. And I look forward to seeing you again and watching more of your epic adventures in the running world and so on. So thank you so much, Carla, and we'll see you soon. So bye bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>